Hey, what's going on, everyone? Mike Lowe here. Welcome back. This is episode four. This is the off-season episode, and this is Next Gen My NBA on NBA 2K21. Here we are on the PS5, and as I mentioned, this would be the episode that starts off right in the midst here of the off-season. So we're going to be jumping into the draft lottery very, very shortly. But first, let's take a look here at what's happened so far. So we've had some player retirements going on. I'm just going to scroll through this list. We're not going to really comment. Dwight Howard probably being the uh, the biggest name there that you're going to see. Um, the Gasol brothers. And so um, <clears throat> pretty typical for what you see there at the end of the first season. As far as staff retirements, we saw in the previous episode that Tim Duncan was hired by the uh, Spurs to be their, uh, their coach. I guess promoted from assistant coach. Greg Popovich thus uh, retires. Uh, maybe a forced retirement, you might call it here. Um, but he is the one staff member to retire. Hall of Fame induction, we have one is Dwight Howard. And then also Jersey retirement, Dwight Howard gets his number 12 retired by the Orlando Magic. The last thing so far were the, uh, the league meetings. And everything was rejected except for one thing, which I overruled to reject it. It said a maximum length of... A uh, regular contract is three years. Um, I'm open to kind of, I wanted to kind of play a couple seasons with thing, things as is. I think in future seasons, I may just kind of go with these as they are. If this was one that was maybe more related to the game or like uh, just some different things that would maybe alter um, gameplay and things like that, that'd be kind of more interesting to me. Uh, but because this is the first off season, I didn't want to kind of tinker with uh, contract length. So I did overrule that one. That brings us next to the draft lottery. And as we've talked about on previous episodes, we have the potential to end up with two first round picks in this year's draft. We also have the potential to end up with zero. We have two conditional first round picks. One currently belongs to Golden State. It comes back to us if we, the Timberwolves, end up with the third overall pick or higher. So one, two, or three, we get that pick back. They would then get an unprotected pick from us in 2022. We have the first round pick of the uh, Atlanta uh, Hawks. And that pick is ours so long as it's not a top 10 pick. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. As things are now, based on the just kind of the, the simple draft lottery format, it's technically set up where we won't have either pick. Because if you look and see that Golden State number seven pick, right? Uh, the seventh pick via Minnesota. That's the one that in order for it to come back to us would have to jump all the way from seven up to either one, two, or three. The pick right after that is the one we currently have, Timberwolves via Atlanta. That one would need to drop a couple spots, or I guess three spots, to fall uh, from either 11 through 14. So again, that just kind of shows you uh, what we're looking at here. So uh, it just depends how you look at it. I mean, having an unprotected pick from Atlanta next year, it's tough to say. Um, I don't think we're a team that's like, terribly desperate where we need a pick. I think obviously what we're probably hoping for is for that Warriors pick to jump up to one, two, or three, and, and certainly not jump up to like four or five, because then they would still get to keep it and it'd be a top five pick. Um, so personally, I'm hoping to see the Warriors pick jump up into the top three. Um, and then if that's the case, I would probably actually rather have the Atlanta pick for next year. Um, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm hoping that the Atlanta pick stays in the top 10 assuming that we would get lucky and get the uh, Warriors uh, current pick to jump up. So let's just take a look here and we'll start going through these. So starting with the Trailblazers and that remains with Portland there. So uh, is this the, the second consecutive year the Trailblazers have held a lottery pick. Okay. And we're going to stop the autoplay here. So next would be Sacramento at pick 13 and they keep it. So again, nothing. Uh, Surprising here, 15th consecutive year for the Kings with a lottery selection, the longest active streak in the NBA, it says. Very interesting. Next, we have the Utah Jazz at 12. So again, we're going to need either this pick or the next pick to come up Atlanta, or else we will get Atlanta's pick next year. So here come the Jazz, and it stays with the Jazz. Uh, they've had 11 lottery selections to their name, but have never drafted with the number one pick. That's interesting. Okay, this is it. So the 11th pick, this would need to come up Atlanta or else we will have Atlanta's pick next year. 76ers is the uh, current slot. And that pick stays 76ers. So, okay, we're not getting two first uh, picks this year. 
our uh, Atlanta pick will bump to next year. That's okay. That's kind of what we're hoping for. But now <laughs> it's looking more and more likely that we will not have a uh, first round pick this year. So 10th pick here. This is the uh, Washington Wizards with the current uh, spot here. And that stays Wizards, Wizards, I should say. So nothing changing here from picks 10 through 14. All right, let's jump into the top 10 here, the top nine at least. Uh, Denver slotted ninth. And uh, what just happened here? The ninth pick goes to Denver. So I guess I think we just had a, a flip there. I apologize. Um, I don't know, the Wizard, yeah, so what is, never mind, I think we're okay. So that goes, yeah, anyway, I got confused there by the message, uh, the message there. So the ninth pick does go to Denver. There have been absolutely no surprises at all um, so far here. So um, the ninth pick goes to the Denver Nuggets. So again, no surprises through the first six picks here. And it is the second consecutive year the Nuggets will have a lottery pick. Um, and as the reporter says there, no surprises. All right, so next up here. Here is the Atlanta spot that we needed to bump back down. It did not. Let's see what happens. Atlanta keeps the eighth pick. Four seasons in a row for the Hawks without a winning record. All right. And yes, Atlanta will hold on to that pick, as she says there. We confirmed that earlier. All right, so the seventh pick is Golden State. Um, but this is, I believe, this is, yeah, this is our pick. So we're hoping that this does not stay here. If it does, we're going to have two firsts next year. It stays there. So we will not have a first-round pick as of now, unless we make some other uh, moves. Uh, but Golden State keeps that pick from us, so they get a seventh overall pick. Good for them. At least it didn't bump up to five or four. That would have been really, really sad. Chicago Bulls, sixth. And that pick stays with the Bulls. There have been absolutely no surprises yet. Of course, they picked Patrick Williams, fourth overall last year. So they'll have a nice little nucleus developing here. Oklahoma City uh, Thunder with the fifth pick. And they will keep that. So they have the 5th and 21st pick this year. Could possibly move up. That's a good point there by the reporter. All right, into the top four. Will we have any surprises? Charlotte Hornets? The Spurs. So the Hornets are going to be jumping up. So Spurs fall down a little bit. Amazing that Spurs have only had four lottery selections all time. So down to the, th the last three here. This is the Hornets again popping up here. So they've bumped up at least one spot. And there we go. So they will uh, bump up to the three spot. Fifth consecutive year holding a lottery pick for the Hornets. And then the Knicks and Pistons. Look at this. Could the Detroit Pistons who are technically slotted in the second spot. But let's see what happens here. So second pick is the Pistons to so the New York Knicks. For all the people thinking that the NBA rigs it, they, of course, aren't rigging my video game. But the New York large market Knicks get the number one overall pick in the draft. See, it just, it just kind of happens, right? Uh, so the Pistons selected Killian Hayes with the seventh pick. And that, of course, leaves... The New York Knicks, who get the number one pick in the draft. Good for them. We, Minnesota Timberwolves, that is, have zero picks. And it says the fifth time the Knicks have had the number one pick in the draft. And they have the right to swap picks with the Clippers, but they'll obviously want to keep that. So, so there we have it. You can see there the draft lottery results. Uh, if you're looking throughout the entire first round, you can see it right here on that screen. I did go through the staff signing, and it's probably one of the most boring parts of this entire game. So just to give you a quick recap, I um, brought on a few new people. So we have a new uh, chief financial officer here, Nicholas Brown. He has a, uh, a badge that I liked here, reducing 
game day expenses by 5%. And what do you know? I mean, we play 82 games, so that could have a, a pretty big impact over the course of a season. Um, he's not the, the best current business rating, but uh, good potential, good badge. And I, I think he can be a, a guy we can let grow into that position on a four-year deal. Uh, we kept the assistant GM because I don't want to waste the money to fire him. And we hired the uh, the ever-elusive coach with the name Lucas Lucas. Um, I'm not sure what to make of that, but his name is Lucas Lucas. So if you have some good nicknames for him, let me hear him. But um, he is a defensive coach. He is a guy who, um, you know, truthfully, there's a, there's a few different directions that I think this team can go. And so uh, he's obviously got pretty good potential, and, and offense and defense are pretty balanced. He is a defensive coach, as I mentioned. So what I was saying about there's different ways we can go, regardless of what offense we end up using, anything from seven second, pace and space, perimeter, it, it doesn't matter, right? All those teams need defense. And so for me, I like to try and build a defensive team anyway. And you can see he's also got a pretty good uh, balance of other uh, uh, different types of offense that we could put in there. So um, ironically, defense is actually not his best rating, um, even though he's a, a defensive coach there. I'm not really sure what to make of that. But then again, his name's Lucas Lucas. So uh, he may just be an, an odd duck to begin with. So um, we then hired head scout Oliver uh, Gatson. And uh, again, scouting B, not a ton of potential, but I, I did like his badge here. That was a step above hard worker. He's dedicated, able to scout an additional two prospects. And since we will have two first round picks next year, I figured he'd be a good guy to bring in. So we're happy with Oliver there. And then our trainer, Nicholas Foster, uh, A potential, B training. And he also has a quirk here, which is a fitness guru. Players work hard in the gym. They tire less quickly during games. So that can hopefully help with some of the shooting woes and, and things like that in the game. So there you have it. That is the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves staff moving forward for next season. Let's take a look at the Timberwolves draft board heading into the draft. You'll see a variety of different positions that we have slotted. And this is just our top five. Uh, you'll also see where they rank according to uh, DE and 2K. Uh, we don't have a first round pick. So of course, all of this would be us moving into this uh, first round. Uh, so we have uh, some higher players, but again, we have to be realistic and say, well, maybe a player like Freddie Waters would be the guy we'd look at. We look at their aggregates here. You can see the ratings, a lot of high potential players. I think for us to move into the first, that would need to be something we'd uh, want to focus on, make sure we get something worthwhile to trade up into. Uh, we look at the player stats here. Again, just kind of across the board, generic stats that you can take a look at as well as their college and so on. So that gives you an idea of what we're looking at here as we head into the draft and start to prepare for a potential trade up into this draft with the extra picks we have for next year. There are a couple of potential trades that we're looking at here, and the first one you can see would have us trading up to the 13th pick. We also have a second trade where we'd be trading up to the 10th pick. So it's just a matter of seeing what falls and whether or not we wanna pull one of these deals off with the extra picks we have in next year's draft. So we're gonna be jumping into the draft here, and the, the general plan is we have options to trade back into this first round. It would be around pick 10, pick 13, and possibly something later like pick 26. Uh, but truthfully, I don't think I want to be trading in that late because it wouldn't require a future first. And that of course is not leaving a lot of wiggle room when you talk value of a 26th pick versus a pick for next year that very likely would be higher than pick 26. So the idea is, there becomes a threshold, right? Of if I'm trading a future pick and, and depending on the protection, if any, that's attached to it, there has to be some sort of threshold in regards to how far are you moving up based on what you're giving up in next year's draft. And so that's the idea. We will evaluate uh, not only what pick is available, but certainly what players are still available and whether we see that as being a good fit. And so the other thing, we'll be doing the exact same thing in the second round. I would love to trade one of our two second round picks in next year's draft for one this year, just to kind of balance out the uh, team depth and also to help with salary cap issues that this team has. We have a, a few very high paid players on this team. And so um, we, we want to be able to start cutting into that, developing players on the cheap right now, as opposed to uh, getting a bunch next year. So that's the general plan, jumping into the draft. Let's see how it goes. With the first pick, the New York Knicks select small forward Victor Richmond.
With the second pick, the Detroit Pistons select shooting guard Johan Sundin. With the third pick, the Charlotte Hornets select shooting guard Jackie Cooper. So we're approaching the fifth pick in the draft, and what I just did was I checked in with the Spurs to see if they'd be willing to move this pick, because there is a player who I think not only would be a really good fit for us, but could be perhaps the best player in the draft, and he's still available, and I just can't see him still being available at pick 10. So we reached out, and I think we might have to start ourselves a deal here. And normally I'm not a big fan of moving up, but in the NBA, when you have just five starters, as opposed to, you know, 22 in football or, or what have you, or, or other sports where it takes years for a player to develop, hockey, baseball, that sort of thing. It's a little bit different with basketball. If you see a guy who can be a really good fit on a number of different levels, which I'll explain, it could really work out to your benefit to try and move up a little bit here. Um, and not only move up, but move in uh, to the first round, which is what we're doing. And so... Just to kind of give you a little background of, of what I'm looking at here is we have two players who are making over 30 million. We are already over the cap with no draft picks, with no free agent sign, and, and not even a full roster. And so something I've kind of kept in my mind is like, well, if we had to deal with one of these guys, perhaps we would do just that and free up this money. Um, other considerations, of course, Joe Inglis making 14. But again, that's not going to put a huge dent when we're talking about trying to bring in another free agent or anything like that. These guys would. Carl Anthony Towns, um, I think, actually probably underperforms a little bit uh, compared to D'Angelo Russell, at least in, in the season we simmed. Um, but D'Angelo Russell isn't exactly the, the fit I'm looking at for point guard. I think he's a fantastic scorer. If we didn't have Anthony Edwards, I'd love to move him over uh, to shooting guard. But again, $30 million is a lot for a guy that we're not really sure is a fit. Um, I'm just not a big fan of a uh, really any guard who can't pr defend the perimeter. And so that immediately kind of brings him down. Again, I, I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, if he wasn't making $30 million, he would not even be a consideration to, to being moved, but he does. Uh, he makes a, a lot of money on a team where we just don't have it. And to me, we have a trade that might make some sense here. So what I did is I went to the Spurs and I said, hey, what do you want for number four? And they offer me one trade. And there it is. It puts us into this draft completely, which is something I talked about, it frees up a lot of salary, even though I really like D'Angelo Russell. But if we go ahead and do this trade here, you can look at the value. We're actually getting a little bit more back. We're cutting a ton of salary. Um, and again, it's going to make us a little bit worse. But in the long run, this frees up money for free agency and potentially makes us a better team. So we make this trade. That puts us on the clock. Now, who are we looking at here? I can show you who we're looking at. When I searched for players who had an A-plus here with the aggregate and also an A-plus with my scout, there were only two guys. Um, these guys, my scout, uh, we have 100% scout. It says A-potential. Hey, pretty good, right? Not great. Uh, well, it is pretty great, but not for where we're picking. A-minus potential. Uh, Sundin, you saw, went second overall. That leaves Karan Fisher, who my scout also thinks is an A+. Uh, if we look at here, he's, he's another really, really strong offensive player. Could develop into a very similar offensive player to what D'Angelo Russell is. Um, but he's already able to play much better perimeter defense. And again, something that we would think would vastly improve. He's already at the position average for perimeter defense. Um, very athletic player. And so I, he's a guy that we think... Um, can come in here right away, take over the spot on a, I mean, pennies to the dollar value uh, when we're talking about uh, taking over for D'Angelo Russell. And so that's what we're going to end up doing here. We're going to actually jump in. As you can see, we're on the clock here. And we're going to be picking Kron Fisher. So Oregon State, just to kind of give you a, a closer look at him here, he's a 76 overall. So again, there are higher rated players in this draft. Um, that we have scouted. Uh, there's even other point guards. Stevie Meyer, for instance, right? This guy's out of Alabama. Another good scorer, good playmaker, but can't play defense. Um, potential, nowhere near as good. Uh, overseas player, I mean, I like Sheldon Ferguson, but again, I mean, we're looking at, you know, a point guard being a, a huge, huge need here for this team. And I just, 
I really, I mean, how can you get away from A plus potential on a 19 year old who's already a 76? Um, again, he's just, I think, has a lot of potential here. Um, one badge so far. Uh, the big board rank for Draft Express has him as the best player in the draft and the best point guard, of course. 2K has him as third, but the best point guard. And uh, NBA is just a little bit off there, but third best point guard. So, uh, I mean, to me, it just seems really, really great. Not only is he an all-star potential, he's an all-NBA potential uh, for his ceiling. Penny Hardaway, very worst-case scenario, he's going to come in and be a nice starter for a number of years. Um, outstanding vertical, gets to the rim, and uh, can also shoot jump shots. So um, we, we saw his offensive game, no significant weaknesses, and I think his defense is something that we can – uh, continue to work on uh, in the, in the Pac-12 uh, schedule here. You can see he has 17 points per game, eight and a half assists, a couple steals per game. Um, you know, not lights out shooting by any means, but um, again, it's something something we think uh, with his potential that can certainly develop. So he's going to be the pick, and let's see what they say about it. So with the fourth pick, uh, we select. It was the fourth pick, not the fifth pick. I, I was thinking it was the fifth pick, but. Um, it might be a typo because I swear that was the fifth pick. But anyway, um, absolutely oozing with potential, says Sequoia Smith. Uh, Fisher is a type of player that most scouts will stake their reputation on. And that's exactly what we're doing. So let's continue with the draft and see how the rest of it goes. I actually messed up earlier and said that we had the fifth pick, but we actually picked fourth. Here's the fifth pick. It's point guard Stevie Meyer going to the Oklahoma City Thunder. For the remainder of the first round, I'll let you take a look at the picks yourself, including a few trades. So here we are, second pick in the second round, and that, of course, is our pick here. And there's a couple guys that I was looking at. A few of them have already been taken very recently, including the previous pick. And let me show you who we're going to be going to grab here. And there was a couple guys I was looking at. First off, Sagana Nadur, I think, would be a decent player. Um, he is actually the highest by backup here, 100% scouted. He's the highest rated player we have left, um, who we've fully scouted. Um, can play the two and the three, six foot seven, pretty good size, starter potential. And uh, if you look at his ratings here, he's able to contribute on offense. I mean, really, really good score. Um, can come in and definitely score. He can also play a little bit of defense. My worry is his potential. I worry that this guy is kind of what he is. At age 22, is he even going to get to, you know, 76, 77? It's tough to say, and that's not a bad pick. He's a guy that would come in and, and kind of fill that depth. But we have, of course, of course Anthony Edwards at the two. We have a lot of guys just kind of in the mix already for the three spot at the small forward. Um, and I'm just not sure we have a spot for him. And, and I know it's all about, you know, kind of picking best available player. But in the NBA in the second round, to me, if you see kind of like a, a Hail Mary player that, that could be a fun little project to take on, go for it. Because it might just work out. And, and that's going to be the second player we're going to look at here. Um, but just to finish the gun in a door here. Um, he's got a shooting badge. He's got a defensive badge. I like this guy. I really, really do. I was almost kind of hoping he'd be gone to make my decision a little bit easier. But let me show you the player I am looking at. Igor Kasparov. He's a JJ Reddit comparison. He's also a 6'7", 2'3 player. And uh, his three-point uh, shooting in college, or at least over in, in uh, Russia, 
Also a very, very good free throw shooter. And here's what we're seeing here. Mid-range and three-point, A+. Plus. I mean, oh, wow, right? Um, not much else going on, but he's got significantly more potential. And he also has four badges that go with kind of his makeup. Catch and shoot, corner specialist, dead eye, and set shooter. So when I talk about kind of looking for this kind of, uh, you know, a, a prospect who could really come in and surprise, uh, I think this is our guy. And I think he'd be a really, really exciting pick. When we look at his aggregate ratings, uh, he's still got the A plus three. His mid-range comes down a little bit. And his potential is still at A minus. And so, um, again, I still think Sador is going to be a, a good player. I'm sorry, it's a gun on the door. Still be a good player. Um, they even think he's uh, an even better defender than uh, I believe what my scout had him at. Uh, perimeter defense. Yeah, yeah. So they, and our scouts are actually say, I don't quite think he's that good. Um, and we have, so like, you know, again, just to kind of show you the, the full picture here. We have some perimeter defenders now, right? We just picked Karan Fisher, who is going to get better. He's already a pretty good prim uh, perimeter defender. We have Anthony Edwards, who we've been working on his defense a lot. He's already turning into a pretty good perimeter defender. Uh, and at the three spot, you know, we already have Joe Inglis. We have Cody, or Kogi, I should say. And so, you know, we have some options there. What we don't necessarily have is like a lights out three point shooter, by the way, a guy who would come off the bench and help us with our bench scoring. So even though I am a huge believer in picking, you know, best available player, almost in all circumstances, to me, this is a situation with, you know, second round pick, you kind of have, uh, you can have a bit of a, a luxury pick, uh, so to speak with a guy like Igor Kasparov. So that's who we're going to pick. Let's see what they say. 32nd pick Timberwolves pick Igor Kasparov from Russia. It says he's a player we don't know a lot about. You have to hope the Timberwolves did their homework on him after taking him so high in the draft. So let's take a little bit closer look at the picks in and around where we picked in both the first and second round. Well, I thought we'd get through the entire offseason in this episode, but we're approaching that half hour mark and I want to try to stick to those. And so we will be continuing in the next episode, looking through quite a few things here. Uh, first off, our rookies did sign. Uh, no big surprise there. So uh, Kasper off the second round pick and Karan Fisher, the first round pick. And we'll be continuing with team player options, qualifying offers, free agency, player progression, and really all the rest as we head into the second season in this Timberwolves franchise here using Next Gen My MBA on NBA 2K21. I'm Mike Lowe. You can find me on Twitter at MikeLowe47. Hit that subscribe button if you've enjoyed these and you want to help out the franchise movement here. That's super appreciated. And I also super appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these and to give me feedback, ask questions and whatnot. So again, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.